Wigan in winter. It's a far cry from the balmy beaches of the South Pacific, but in 1993 it became the new home for the former New Zealand All Black, Inga Twigamala. As well as having to adapt to a different country, he also had to change to a different game, from rugby union to rugby league. Well, there's a lot of difference. Uh, first of all, it's uh, the two games that uh, are miles apart. They're totally different games altogether. I came here and not expecting um, to do a lot in the first few months, but yeah, I was thrown into the deep end, and meaning that my whole training schedule had to be different to that of what I'm used to. Um, they brought me through some physical training that I've never encountered in, in my whole life. And for three and a half months, I used to wake up three o'clock in the morning, uh, running the bar so I can soak my, my, my body in it. And uh, it was hard, it was really hard. I mean, the, the level of fitness that is required to play rugby league um, is out of this world. One of the highlights of Inga's career was with the New Zealand All Blacks. It was his very last game with them against the Barbarians. Tui Gamala goes. Tui Gamala over the 22. Tui Gamala all the way. A magnificent score. It was when he was a schoolboy that Inga was challenged by what he saw happening in the lives of his best schoolmates. And I started seeing a real change in them that uh, made me sit up and think, well, what's going on here? You know, these boys were just real bad boys, they're really mischief, uh, got into a lot of mischief and trouble, and to see them change, and I, I couldn't accept it because I thought, no, no, these are my best friends, these are the friends that I always used to hang around and get into trouble with. But I, I saw something that I've never seen in a lot of my friends, and that was I saw peace, and I saw joy, um, I saw love. I wanted it as well. I wanted to be part of it. I didn't want to miss out. And it was then that, uh, you know, through an economics teacher of mine, Anita Turner, she explained to me that um, the three steps of salvation and that uh, I needed to uh, recognise that I'm a sinner and confess with my mouth that God sent his son for me and to believe that uh, he will come into my life and change me into his child. I remember that night when I went to bed, I remember I, did, I, did, I wake up for, for an unknown reason. I just woke up and I felt this awesome uh, peace, anointing peace um, that just um, came over me. I mean, I felt it from inside me and that was, that, that was when I knew that I was forgiven. I knew that uh, God had accepted me. I've always liked to know that I can go out on the field and, and really express myself. You usually have that tag that cushions our wimps. The generation we're living now, now, it's not cool to be a Christian. And that is what a lot of the people in the world think today, that being a Christian is for sissies and, and it's not right to be a Christian. I'm thankful that God has opened my eyes to the reality of it all. One of his teammates at Wigan was hugely influenced by his faith. He not only went on to become England Rugby Union captain in 2005, but also a fellow Christian. His name, Jason Robinson. <laughs> 